You probably hear 80s fashion and immediately think acid wash denim, massive permed hair, neon, and of course, a bit of spandex. But what if I were to tell you that navy blazers, Bermuda shorts, and penny loafers were just as popular? Preppy style comes and goes from mainstream fashion, but in the 80s, preppy really hit its peak. It was the golden age of preppy, if you will. Before the 80s and really since then, I feel like we use preppy as an adjective to describe someone's clothing or the way that they dress. Like, oh my god, girl, that's such a cute preppy outfit. But in the 80s, preppy became a noun to describe a type of person. Like, you were a preppy. And a preppy was a rich, waspy, all-round achieving, college-bound kid, normally wearing a polo shirt with a cable knit sweater tied around their neck. Do you like my cosplay? Oh, and in this video, I'm mainly talking about preppy in the United States in the 80s. There were definitely like preppy adjacent styles in the 80s, like the Sloan Ranger in West London, for example. And there's definitely crossover, lapping over with those styles. But for the sake of my sanity, we're gonna be talking about the American breed of 80s preppy. So why the 80s? Why did the preppy really pop off and take over the mainstream in this time? Here are a few reasons why I think so. Firstly, financially, the 80s were really a great time. Like people were gaining a lot of wealth and obviously they wanna show that in their outward appearance, looking put together, show off their wealth and their class. This was also quite a conservative time politically. This was the Reagan era of pro-business, greed is good mindset. And you really see that coming through in fashion in this era, the strong shoulders, power suits, striped ties and suspenders. The term yuppie was coined in the early 80s and this was slang for a young, upwardly mobile business professional who was way too focused on building wealth, like very materialistic and greedy. Like it was, a, it was a derogatory term. You didn't want to be called a yuppie or maybe you did. I don't know. There is a bit of crossover of style in terms of preppies and yuppies, but I think the way to think of it is a bit like old money versus new money. Preppies wanted to wear their Ivy League college blazers and then yuppies wanted their Armani suits and Rolex watches, like very flashy, materialistic and show off. I mean, they're both equally as obnoxious as each other, let's be real. I then think that 80s media, movies and TV were a big factor in preppy taking off. I read a scholarly paper um, called The Look Back in E.T. written in 1992 by Isla J. Bick. As the title suggests, this article was mainly about the film E.T. and the weird mother-son dynamics in that movie. But she did talk about this Reaganite era of filmmaking and how people wanted to see basically like fairy tales and allegories and wish fulfillment play out on screen. And I think this plays into the audience wanting to see really strong archetypal characters in their movies and TV. Even if it's not like a Spielberg alien mythical creature time travel-y sort of movie, like if it's set in a high school, for example, people still wanna see the jock, the nerd, the pretty girl cheerleader, the preppy. I think John Hughes movies are a perfect example of this. Hello, The Breakfast Club, or like the character of Steph in Pretty in Pink, which leads to preppies sort of becoming like the uptight villains in 80s movies. Like you have Steph in Pretty in Pink, Stan in Revenge of the Nerds. I found this meme <laughs> while I was putting together this video and I thought it was very apt. Another example is the Heathers. They all have structured blazers and wearing plaid and colored tights and just like generally evil. Or the character of Alex P. Keaton, Michael J. Fox's character in Family Ties. Now, I, would, I wouldn't classify this character as a villain, but he was definitely representative of the yuppie. Like, obsessed with wealth, obsessed with Reagan. And then, if we really want to get down to basics of why Preppy became so mainstream in the 80s, the release of the official Preppy handbook in 1980 certainly helped. Now this book was actually a satirical tongue-in-cheek book poking fun of people like this. It was poking fun of preppies. 
And the idea of this book was basically a guide on how to be a preppy. Even though it was a joke book, it actually was low-key useful because it had all these things on it like how to dress like a preppy, like brands to shop at, how to act correctly, what colleges you should go to, nicknames, what you should name your kids, what books to read. Like it was low-key helpful. <laughs> and that's why because of this book, it actually provided people with information on this very closed off world that people previously did not have access to. So in a way it kind of democratized preppy. It made it attainable for the everyday person. This book garnered a sort of cult following and you can still buy secondhand copies online, but they can be kind of spensy. Like I saw one, someone was trying to sell it for over $350. By the way, there was also a Sloan Ranger handbook, there was a Yuppie handbook, and there was also an I Hate Preppies handbook. So there was really a handbook for everyone. I feel like the humidity is making my hair bigger as this video goes on, but at the same time, like that's very 80s. Like my hair is really like, you wanna talk about 80s? Okay. <laughs> so we've explored why the preppy phenomena became so popular in the 80s, so mainstream. But let's get on to how to actually dress like an 80s preppy. First of all, I do want to mention that most of the styles, the preppy trends at this time, were fairly androgynous. Obviously, women wore skirts and dresses too, but most of the styles like penny loafers, Bermuda shorts, Ray-Bans, they were for both men and women. The polo shirt was incredibly popular and you wanted to have this in lots of different colors get some versatility. I did read that wearing it with the collar popped up was quite popular, but to be honest, that's just giving me sort of 2000s frat boy energy. The cable knit sweater tied around the neck, tennis sweaters, Ivy League cardigans, or Ivy League sweatshirts, like with the Ivy League school emblem on the front. That's very Princess Diana, isn't it? Now those classic preppy colors that never really go out of style were still popular at the time. So navy, red, camel, creams, beiges. And this is where the navy blazer, khaki pants, and penny loafer combo comes in. <laughs> As I mentioned right at the very start of the video, people think 80s was all bright colors, bright neon, but actually pastels were incredibly popular too, especially in the early 80s. The green and pink combo was also a popular color combo. We saw this circle back round in the early noughties as well. People say that fashion goes on a 20 year cycle and you could definitely see that from 80s to the early 2000s. I think it's in the second Sex in the City movie when they flash back to how the, all the girls meet and you see Charlotte and she's in her classic green and pink Lily Pulitzer outfit just representing 80s preppy. And then Madras plaid. This was also very, very popular. Ralph Lauren, actually, did you catch that? I noticed that they did Madras plaid in their summer season just past. The 2022 equivalent to Madras plaid is definitely patchwork. I've seen a lot of brands do this, like the great Hunter Bell, um, Dewen was doing patchwork dresses and not gonna lie, I'm very into it. Then to complete the outfit, you want to have on some tennis sneakers, specifically the tree torn, sneaker, tre torn. I don't know how to pronounce this, sorry. Please phonetically write it in the comments down below. I feel like Dunlop volleys, if you're Aussie, then you know what I'm talking about. These are like the Australian equivalent to tre torn sneakers, the classic rubber and canvas tennis sneakers that everybody wore in the 70s and 80s. And the look was to wear white socks with the tennis sneakers. And then lastly, I do have to mention Laura Ashley dresses, and I'm going to do an entire video just on Laura Ashley because that is a whole can of worms. <laughs> that is a whole video topic in and of itself. Laura Ashley dresses were kind of like the precursor to cottage core today. Please feel free to chime in in the comments if I've missed anything that's like quintessentially 80s preppy. Be a chime minister down there. Also, if you were an 80s preppy, I'd love to hear about it. Like, please indulge me with some personal stories in the comment section. If you did enjoy today's video, please do remember to give it a like. It always just helps boost the video a little bit. So I'm always very grateful for likes. And then feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.